So in this video, we're going to look specifically at the kingdom of Archaebacteria and Eubacteria. So there's distinct differences between the two. A lot of times these get confused or kind of merged together and they're different. So first, the kingdom of Archaebacteria. They inhibit some of the most extreme environments on Earth. Some are autotrophic, meaning they're producing food by chemosynthesis. Some um, Archaebacteria genes possess introns. So these are kind of make them kind of unique individuals. The extreme environments, this is the hot springs here. This is kind of what they look like if you look under the microscope. Uh, the kingdom of Archaebacteria, they share certain key characteristics. Cell walls lacking peptidoglycan. So you remember back when we did gram staining of bacteria, uh, we looked at the pepto peptidoglycan presence or absence of and where that might be located. They lack those entirely. Usually lipids and unique rRNA sequences. Remember, rRNA is referring to ribosomal RNA. And unique rRNA sequences indicate that they can be classified by this as different and unique. And this is how we can start to divide things into different kingdoms. We look for certain markers. In this case, unusual uh, lipid constructions, which is our fats, and unique ribosomal RNA sequences can help us determine that. This kind of gives an example of some of the membrane structures that these archaebacteria may have. And all the numbers are labeled here. I'm not going to get into that much detail. Uh, it does show some different um, lipid sequences between bacteria and our archaea, just so you can have that sense of comparison. We see here a very simple chain format. We see here a lot more branching. So when it says unique lipids, this is what it's referring to. Again, these archaebacteria are groups um, into three general categories. And these are kind of based on the conditions uh, that they may be able to survive. So this methanogens obtain energy by using hydrogen gas to reduce carbon dioxide to methane gas. So you can see the kind of the word methane in there, and that's kind of what they're using. These extremophiles are grown under extreme conditions. Thermophiles means extreme heat. Uh, Haleophiles is extreme salt. It could be wide degree of pH tolerance uh, or pressure tolerance. But the example here of deep ocean vents, this is an extremely stressful environment. But there's also non-extreme archaebacteria, and these grow in the same environments as bacteria do. And these would be anaerobic environments such as those that lack oxygen gas, which is very important for the respiration process. Looking at a comparison chart between the two, our archaeobacteria and our eubacteria, archaeobacteria tend to be very simple and living in these extreme conditions. Um, and introns are present. And there's those three main types I talked about. Moving over now to eubacteria, they can be a little more complex, a little more common uh, than our archaeobacteria. Introns are absent, they're spliced out. There's two main types, our gram positives and our gram negatives. You'll recognize these as being gram-positive because of their purple color. If they were gram-negatives, they'd be a pinkish red. Looking at eubacteria, again, classifying these, their bacteria um, are the most abundant organisms on Earth. They play critical roles throughout the biosphere. Most taxonomists recognize 12 to 15 major groups, and bacteria are different from archaeobacteria as they are from eukaryotes, so they are their own unique classification. Remember, remember the eubacteria uh, being just the bacteria, their simple structure, prokaryotic in nature, uh, their different shapes that we can use to help identify them. And you'll see all not all taxonomists agree, 12 to 15 major groups, that's why there's some variance there. So the kingdom of eubacteria, uh, they reproduced by binary fission, and we kind of see that going on here in this image. This includes disease-causing bacteria such as tooth decay or food poisoning, and archaeobacteria and eubacteria contain all of the prokaryotes, and both reproduce by this binary fission, this division that's occurring. But they do have some ways uh, to recombine genes allowing for evolution to occur. Remember back to our plasmids, uh, that those DNA sequences can be transferred. Also notice the petri dishes here of Staphylococcus. That's an example of the eubacteria. Uh, Gram-negative bacteria have this flagellum. This flagellum, or plural flagella, is a long, slender projection from the body cell that rotates like a pr propeller 
and this allows the bacteria to swim. So you think of it kind of going along and swimming right along. Uh, e. coli and salmonella are two examples of this. So hopefully this clarifies some of the difference between our eubacteria um, and our archaeobacteria, and you're able to tell the difference between those two and identify certain characteristics with each.